Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Click to subscribe Believing Beings and press the bell icon to get notified about new videos. Tamim from Bangladesh. My question is whether Allah has created us all with equal intelligence and if not, what was my fault that he did not give me good brain like you? Tamim has asked the question, has Allah created all of us with equal intelligence and if no, then why did he not give me brain as good as mine? As good as you wish to me. Number one, Allah has not created all human beings with equal intelligence. There's no verse of the Quran, there's no hadith. And if not equal, then why didn't he give me good brain like my brain? But the question is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Mulk, chapter number 16, verse number 2, Allah has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. This life Allah has created for the human beings as a test for the hereafter. And the test keeps on differing for different people. Number one, depending upon the ability Allah has given you, Allah will test you. Depending upon the facility Allah has given you, Allah will test you. Allah gives different facility to different people. Some people he tests with wealth. He gives them, makes them wealthy. Some people he makes poor. If he makes you wealthy, the rule is every lunar year minimum you have to give zakat 2.5% of your saving every year in charity compulsory called as zakat. For the poor person, as far as zakat is concerned, he gets 100 out of 100. For the rich person, if he gives the zakat then properly, then he will get full mark. If he gives half zakat, he gets half mark. So who is better? In terms of zakat, the poor man is confirmed 100% he is going to get 100 marks in zakat. For the rich man, he may get 100 out of 100, he may get 90, he may get 50, he may get 20, he may get 0. That's the reason our beloved prophet said it is easier for a poor man to go to Jannah than a rich man. For a rich man, he is accountable. For the poor man, as far as wealth is concerned, no accountability. He is below the poverty level. So where will Allah ask him for the accountability? Yes, of course, he has to earn in the halal way. But as far as zakat is concerned, he doesn't have to give zakat. So in terms of zakat, the rich man has to give, poor man doesn't have to give. So Allah has given him wealth. With it comes a test. Allah makes him poor, zakat, he gets 100 out of 100. Similarly, Allah gives someone health. Someone is born with a congenital defect. So Allah makes some people rich, some people poor, some people healthy, some people sick. So depending upon the facility he has given you, Allah will test you. So Allah tests different people in different ways. Coming to your question, that has Allah given everyone equal intelligence and the answer is no. And you ask the question, then why has Allah not given me a good brain like me? If you say Allah has given me a good brain, I am thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows best how good it is, but I am thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah, I don't know how good is your brain, but hypothetically if I agree with you that your level of intelligence is less, I don't say it is, but hypothetically if I agree with you. Now, depending upon the facility Allah has given, Allah will test. For example, if you are running a race, 100 meter dash, and if you want to be equal, if a person is handicapped, there is a thing, a handicap given to him. That means, if a person is lame, and if there is a 100 meter race, he will start at the 50 meters mark. Because he is limping. A person who has both legs healthy, he will start from zero. A person who limps, maybe he will start from 50 meters. A person who is going on crutches, he may start from 25 meters mark. And when the race starts, who comes first? It is equal. Depending upon the ability of running, to make the race equal, the person who is on crutches, may start at the 25 meters mark or will start at maybe 15 meters mark. The person who limps may start at 50 meters mark or 60 meters mark. A person who is healthy, he may start at 0 meter mark. So depending upon the facility, a person who is completely healthy, he has to run the full 100 meters. A person who is who's limping may have to run half. The person who is on crutches may have to run only 25 percent. This is called handicap. Similarly, if suppose a person whose intelligence level hypothetically is maybe 90 percent, 
So Allah would expect more from him. A person whose intelligence level is twenty percent, Allah would expect less for him. So person whose intelligence is twenty percent, if he gets twenty out of hundred, he gets full marks. If a person whose level is ninety percent, he has to get ninety of one hundred to pass. A person who has twenty percent intelligence, he has to get twenty marks out of hundred to pass. So if Allah has given one person less intelligence, Allah will judge him accordingly. And if you say Allah has given me more intelligence, that is the reason I strive harder. I sleep less. I sleep on an average only three to three and a half hours a day. Why? No, I am a doctor. I know normal a human being requires about seven to eight hours of sleep, and there is a very small percentage of human point zero zero one who sleep less than six hours and can function normally. So I believe that Allah has given me so much niyama. That is the reason I am striving harder. I am striving harder that because Allah has given me more niyama, I have to strive more. I have to sleep less. I have to work hard so that Allah will put me in Jannah, and inshallah I pray. I have faith in Allah that may He accept my efforts. So, if you consider that your intelligence is less, Allah walam, and if you consider my intelligence is high, Allah walam, then I have to strive more. I know that Allah has given me the ability to reason out logic. I am a stammerer. He gave me the power to speak. I could not say my name. If someone asked me in childhood what was my name, I said my name is Zada Zada Akhir in the medical college. Allah blessed me. Now I am speaking in front of large audiences. So if Allah has given me this help, it's my duty. I have to strive harder. So coming to the intelligence level again, Allah has not given same intelligence to everyone. So based on the level of intelligence, He will judge you. For you passing is twenty out of hundred. For a person with intelligence, it may be eighty out of hundred, maybe ninety out of hundred. So this is the beauty of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He gives some. Like Allah says, He has blessed some people with more gifts than the others. Based on the gifts He has given, He will judge accordingly. He has given high level of certain things to one person, low level to the other, to other. Based on the level of that thing He has given, He will judge accordingly. So this is the beauty of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah is the Malik of the Deen. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter four, verse number forty, Allah is never unjust in the least degree. We human beings can be unjust. Allah says He is never unjust in the least degree. That is the reason the Quran says, on the day of judgment, the kafir will never complain to Allah that he has done injustice. What they say? Give me one more chance, and Allah will say it is too late. So it will be so crystal clear on the day of judgment that those who have been put in hell will never complain to Allah. Why did you put us in hell? It will be so crystal clear to them that they were given the option they were given the chance they were given the facility and they disobeyed allah subhanahu wa taala only thing they will ask that give us one more chance and allah said too late allah says in the quran that the kafir would like to give the complete the full wealth in the world even if they give the complete wealth in the world as a barter to allah for jannah allah will not accept it that means the kafir will realize that what they did was completely wrong They did kufr. They disobeyed Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So similarly, with all the human me, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, no one will ever object to the justice of Allah. Whatever ability has given to each individual, He will judge them accordingly. That's the reason our beloved Prophet said that the test undergone by the messengers of Allah was the most difficult, because Allah gave the best niyama to the messengers. They are much more higher than normal human beings. So because they were given higher ability, more niyama. The test was the most difficult. The test undergone by the ambiyas, by the messengers, was the highest. No human being can say that they are tested more than the ambiyas. Then the next generation would be the sabas of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then we cannot compare ourselves to the sabas. That is the reason in the dua in, in the Quran. It says in the Quran in the last verse of Surah Bakara, chapter two, verse number two eighty six, Allah does not lay on any human being a burden he can bear. Allah does not lay on any human being a burden more than he can bear. Then the verse continues, "O oh Lord, lay not on us a burden more than we can bear." Isn't it contradicting? When Allah has given a statement that He does not lay a burden on any human being more than he can bear, so why do we do dua? "O oh Allah, lay not on us a burden greater than we can bear." It means that we human beings are so foolish that we dig our own graves. In Urdu, we say. अपने पैर पे कुलाड़ी मारना इन इंग्लिश वी से वी डिग अवर ओन ग्रेव दैट मीन वी पुट द बर्डन ऑन अर सेल्फ एंड देन वी से ओ वी कैन नॉट बेर इट 
so allah does not lay on any human being a burden more than he can bear but what we do we go out of the way we rob we steal we get used to this luxury and then we say we cannot stay without luxury so we are overburdening ourselves so please remember allah is always just irrespective whatever facility allah has given you whether it has made you rich or poor whether healthy or whether he has made you sick whether he has given you some facility or not whether he has made you handicap or not whether he has made you intelligent or not be rest assured your test would be just you will never be denied the justice what you have to do is read the quran follow the quran and say hadith understand it and do the best what you can and inshallah inshallah pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lay to put not on as a burden greater than we can bear he doesn't do that you should not dig your own grave read the quran read the hadith implement it and inshallah inshallah you will enter jannah